Hi everybody, I hope you're all well and welcome to this how to paint a baby bird time lapse video, specifically how to paint a baby blue tip. So at the beginning of June this year we had three baby birds hatch in our garden which is so adorable including the tiniest one here which we nicknamed Runty, literally the smallest we'd ever seen in our garden. And so we watched in awe and admiration as the two parents frantically tried to keep this little guy alive. More to that story later. So this is the photo I took which we're going to be painting from and the reason I picked this photo is because it's composed of mainly two sort of round shapes, obviously the bird and the leaf, which I thought would be quite an approachable thing to begin with. So let's get started. So you'll probably want to start with a basic pencil outline. You could draw a rough circle shape on the left for the bird, and then kind of slanty oval shape on the right for the leaf. I like to draw freehand as I think it's really good practice skills for your drawing technique, but you could also uh, maybe trace the paper if you wanted to. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se if you just want to practice your painting skills. Um, or by all means, you know, take your time, there's no rush. I've just sped this up as um, the pencil lines are obviously quite faint to shove on camera. So you now have your rough outline, but don't worry if you're not too happy with it at this point, as we will end up rubbing most of it out anyway. We're now going to be using what we call the wet on wet technique. So basically this just means wetting the page in areas you first want to put your paint on it. So you'll wet the page and then take some paint wet the paint a little bit and then put the paint straight into the sections of the paper that you've just basically put water on and what you'll find is the paint kind of drips into the water and makes lots of lovely pretty shapes and what I'm starting with is mainly the outline of the bird just focusing on sort of the darker shadowy areas and just things like the eyes just so we can start to build up the overall sort of outline of the bird. I'm now adding some yellow for the chest area and this just basically forms part of the first layer of paint that we're adding. So you can add the yellow where you see it in the picture, such as in the face and around the beak, and mainly just focusing on keeping it nice and light and thin. You don't want to apply the paint too thickly. As I say, this is just the first thin layer and we'll be waiting for this first layer to dry before we build upon it. So just really try and keep the paint um, light and not adding it too thickly. So while we're waiting for the first layer of paint in the bird to dry, we can move on to areas in the background, um, focusing on areas such as the leaf, again using the wet on wet technique. So again, I've wet the areas of the page that I want, then I'm just going in with some green paint. Um, this is the stack green colour, which is a nice warm green and just loosely adding the wet paint into the wet sections of the page um, just pushing the brush around loosely, pushing the paint around where you want it and you can even add some areas of red and maybe some brown in the foreground to represent the sort of stone area and adding this background and foreground elements just makes the bird look like it's not sort of floating in the middle of the page it adds a bit of what we call context So this is what our baby bird is looking like so far when this first layer has dried I'm going to go back in and add sort of fill in some of the gaps so in the leaf I'm going to add some yellow um, veins and just wait for that to dry first otherwise if I try and do it now it will all smudge together so really watercolour is essentially about building up very thin fine layers so you kind of have to have patience but what I like to do is while I'm waiting for stuff to dry I'll just leave it go off and do something else and then by the time I finish that you know 20 minutes 30 minutes it'll have mostly dried so then I can come back and get going um but what's really nice you can see the watercolor doing the wet on wet technique it started to make really pretty shapes um so that's going to be really nice just for a bit of foreground here with the stones as you can see in the stones on the picture they've got their own sort of unique patterns um but obviously, you know, this is where artistic license come in. It is your sort of impression of what you can see and using the paint and what you've got to your advantage. Um, so yeah, let's wait till this dries, this first layer, and then we'll get back to it. 30 minutes later. So as you can see, that first layer has now dried, and I'm now just going to rub out those pencil marks. So 
So the next step is basically to add in all the detail and finer points and we do this using the wet on dry technique. So this time round I'm not wetting the page with water to begin with, I'm basically just wetting my paint as normal and adding it straight onto the dry areas of the painting. And this is really nice because it's just a way of adding sort of more detail, more contrast. So I'm kind of going over some of the, the first layer that I've already did and just adding in more detail. This can be a really nice way of highlighting sort of the shape of the feathers, for example around the face here, and just adding all those finer little details. So I'm adding more sort of contrast and shadowy areas, again with this second layer. And you probably notice that I like to leave sort of little gaps, and this can often be what we can use for sort of where the light might be shining. So the little darker areas that I'm adding, we can use to focus on sort of shadowy areas. So it's really just about a loose way of capturing light, shadow and shape. And I'm really, I'm not being sort of overly fussy or, you know, doing this like for like. I'm just sort of adding the paint loosely and building up my impression of what I can see. And as you can see with that second layer, the yellow is now looking much stronger. Um, you know, the, as you build up more layers, you build up more strength in the colour. And it's just a nice way of building up subtle colour so the paint doesn't look too heavy. So I'm now adding the yellow veins onto the leaf and just adding some slightly um, darker green. Um, and when I say darker green, all I'm basically doing is just adding more of the same paint so it's more concentrated and just kind of spreading that around loosely just to get some light um, and shadowy elements on the leaf. I'm also adding a bit of blue on the um, areas of the bird where the light is shining because when you look at um, lighter areas on paintings, sometimes you'll see different colours in the lights and often birds' feathers can shine blue and this also is quite a nice nod to the you know, blue to element of the bird. I've also added a bit of brown underneath as well as on the beak just to give a bit of contrast and shadow. So just before I show you how I finish off the uh, painting, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about Little Runty here. And I think this was him on day two. You can see him hopping around and generally trying to fly. And so a strange thing kind of happened. We don't normally get cats in our garden, but the first night my partner randomly woke up and he looked out the window and he saw a cat, so obviously immediately ran and scared it off. On the second night, we were a bit worried that the cat was going to come back and Runty, poor little fellow, he hadn't really hidden behind anything. So we thought, what to do? So we put this um, wicker uh, plant pot with holes in it over the top of Runty. Um, so he had plenty of room and so he was hidden from view. And in the morning, I was going to get up at 4am so I could obviously remove it so his mom could obviously find him. So I actually had a really strange dream that woke me up about 20 minutes before my alarm was due to go off and I looked out the window and lo and behold the cat had come back. It hadn't been able to tip the pot over or anything like that so Runty was all safe underneath but I imagine he would have been really scared. Um, so I scared the cat off and I removed the um, the pot when I could see that the cat blatantly wasn't going to come back and then the mum and the dad obviously found the baby okay. So we had saved Runty, he was safe and well, and at the end of that following day, we didn't actually know where he'd gone. So we don't know if um, a cat got him or if he'd just flown away and obviously he'd been able to, you know, fly and obviously he'd reached his development to be able to do that. But we don't know what happened, but I really hope that, you know, he did manage to survive. We did try and help. Um, obviously we only we interfered as we felt was necessary for its safety. Obviously we knew there was a cat around and we weren't sure what else to do. We didn't want to touch the bird or bring him inside. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we did what we could. Often you just have to let nature do its thing and take its course and there's obviously nothing that you can do. But um, yeah, maybe we'll see Runty again and obviously I'll let you know um, next year how many blue tip babies that we have. Doing this little um, blue tip baby painting as well is also a really nice, you know, way of remembering the special moments of watching them in our garden.
because you don't really get to see that all very often. So lastly, just to finish off the painting, I'm going to add a tiny bit of coloured pencil um, just to do a little bit of detail around the beak. Sometimes it's quite hard to capture um, really fine detail with watercolour um, unless you use a really, really tiny brush. But sometimes I, I like to get around this by using a bit of coloured pencil as it blends really nicely with the paint. And I'm also going to use a bit of white um, gouache paint. This is brilliant for, you know, capturing um, little highlights. and. And lastly, I just added some light uh, paint splats just around the bird and on the leaf area um, using the yellow and green. And I think this just adds just a little um, extra something just to the background, just to give it a bit of an abstract quality as well. And this is quite easy to do um, just by tapping a couple of paintbrushes together with a bit of paint on the end. And here you are, here is the final piece. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. And as you can see, the loose style makes the bird look very floofy and young and innocent and sweet. And I hope it shows you you don't have to be too precise with paint to achieve really great results. So maybe you'd like to give it a go and let me know if you do. I'll also be posting a real-time tutorial of this painting over on my Patreon channel at Patreon slash Gemma Johnson Art. So maybe you'd like to give me a follow and become a patron over there. For more details, please see the link. And for a full description of all the materials used in this video, please see the description below. In the meantime, you can follow my artwork over on my social media channels as linked above. If you've had any unexpected garden visitors, uh, let me know in the comments and let me know what you'd like me to paint next. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.